Okay, off we go. We're in, uh, we're still in Hosea. <laughs> Fancy that. Wow, so we're way in 211. I was, okay, so, we, so we're working on Natsal, in other words. Natsal. So we're in 211. We're discussing the first word. And we discussed one verse, which was Second Chronicles. 2025, and I'm sure it had something in there. So we're going to go on to some more verses. <coughs> Mizmor, Lamid Dalit, Pasuk Shmonet, Tsa'aku, we talked about recently. Screaming out, crying out, and Yehovah Shomea, Shomea, he hears. U me call, and from all. Tsarot, right there, Tsarot, like their Tsar, like their troubles. He seal lam. He saves them, he delivers them. Okay, good. So this is what we're on. That's a Gimel, Zachariah, Gimel, Pasuk Shtayim. Zachariah, what does his name mean? Vayomer. Who is talking to who? To the devil. Hasatan. What does Satan mean? Accuser. Yigar means rebuke. He will rebuke. Yahweh will rebuke you. Satan, he will rebuke you. It says twice. And then it goes on to talk more about some of the characteristic of Yahweh. Habocher. Do you remember? To choose. He is the one who is choosing what? Jerusalem. Hello? Is it not so? Zeh, and oud is uh, a little. Um, it's not a. It's not an instrument. <laughs> a little firebrand, a little piece of fire, right? And where is it? Mutzal. This is from Natsal. It is saved from the ish, from the fire. What form is this mutzal? It's hufal. It's hufal. It starts to the men. He is. Rescued. Who is the who's a little piece of fire that's rescued from the fire? Yeshua. Okay, that's what it's talking about. It's talking about well, this is the whole chapter with Joshua and the filthy garment, and all this parallels Yeshua, the high priest. Right. Amos. Gimel pasuk ho amar Thus, say it. Okay. Ka'asher. Like, when, as, in the same way, yatzil, so here's your verb, yatzil, okay? Who is doing the saving? The ro'eh. Who is the ro'eh? The shepherd. Mi, pi. From the mouth of the ari, the lion. What is he going to save? Shte, to, kira'ayim, we haven't really had, but it's equivalent to legs. So he's going to save either only one of these two things, two legs or Bedal Ozen. So we haven't seen this Bedal in a really long time. It goes back to Genesis 1, where God divided. What did he divide? The waters, the darkness, and the light. These are, so this Bedal here, it's not a division, it's a division of something, it's a division of an Ozen, piece of, of an ear. So the picture is, you know, the lions come. He's got the most of the sheep, of one sheep, <laughs> not, not all the sheep. He's got most of this one left. All he can rescue is either a pair of legs or a piece of an ear. It's, it's minimal. Okay, that's the picture. It's a minimal. Ten. Uh, thus, in that way, ye not slew. So this is not Saul. We see the nun. This is a nephal form will be saved. Who will be saved? B'nai Yisrael. And Hayoshvim, they are dwelling where? In Shamron, in Samaria. It doesn't look good. B'fe'at. So a pe'ah, you haven't seen it uh, probably. It talks about this when it talks about uh, the reaping, the rules for reaping. They can do the corners of the field. It's different than pina, which is a wall thing. Corners, but this is a corner in the edge. 
where you see it, where you uh, might hear about it, is when you hear about the black hats, Orthodox Jews, that grow their side locks. They're called peyot, or in Yiddish, peyas. Okay? Because it's the corner of their hair that they don't cut. These peyot, they, t they tuck them behind their ears. Uh, this, these people are going to be saved on the corner of their mitah bed. And now Dameshek is the name for Damascus. I'm never... Uh, known it to mean anything, but it's in parallel. It's the edge of Eris is a couch. Things are bad. Damask, right. Well, that's where damask comes from. Okay, so there's a fabric called damask. And do you know what it looks like? Pattern. It's got, yes, it's, it's got a woven pattern in it. This is the edge of the couch. They will be saved, but only a remnant of them. Okay, so we're working on Natsal. All right, I have one more here that's from Shemot, Lamed Gimel. Pasuk Shesh. What binyan is it? Hit pa'el, okay? So they they freed themselves. They they say they freed themselves from what? This is what Trisha is always talking about, the edi. What is it? The edyam. What is the edi? The ornament. There's a lot of words here besides ornament. Said it meant uh, forever. That's leolam va'ed, right? What's Eda? Congregation. And Ed or Edut also is a witness or a testimony. And the Moed, right? The Moedim. And you never see them put them back on again through the whole thing. Okay? What are the Moedim? The Moedim are your ornaments. And they show the world, their testimony to the world that you belong to Yahweh. To Yahweh. It's your witness. So this yit not slew, this is in the hit pa'el, they freed themselves, right, of their ornaments. In other words, they took them off. How so now we're in the middle of verse 11. So, okay, lachen, ashu, I will return, the lakachti, and I will take. Remember, she thought that her lovers gave her all this stuff. God said, I gave her all that stuff. I'm coming and I'm going to take it away. And this is what it is, the dagan, the grain, not the dog. <laughs> Right, the dog is a fish. The grain, ba'ito, we talked about in his in his time. Uh huh. And the tirosh, we talked about. Remember it? The gan tirosh v'yitzhar. The wine, tirosh is a wine. Bumoado, not in its time, in its appointed time. So he says, at the right time, I'm going to come. The time that I've appointed, the time that I pick. I'm going to come get the corn, the grain. I'm going to come get the wine, and he's salty. I'm going to save a rescue, right? The Tzemer, you remember the Tzemer? Bull and the Pishta. What was the other thing? Flax or linen. And what's he going to do? I mean, what are they doing? Lichasot. They are covering what? Erva. Her nakedness? Yes, it's the same word as Noah. They uncover his nakedness. It's the same word that's used consistently in uh, all the sexual purity laws. Don't uncover your husband, wife, sister, blah, blah, blah. Verse 12, here we go. Attack. Now, agale, I will expose. I will roll away and see what's underneath the stone. And he's going to expose her nivlut, foolishness. Okay, so we've talked about naval. So this is nivlut, foolishness. But it's not translated foolishness, actually, in uh, most of your Bibles. Well, I say that. I don't know. Let me see. I don't even know what I have. Who's compulsiveness. compulsiveness. What does your say? Shame. Shame. Lewdness. In the Greek, it's uh, akarthasia, her uncleanness. Okay. Which is different than navlut. But anyway, we have the idea. And who is it going to be exposed to, uncovered to? A ne ma'adeha the eyes of her lovers, and they're going to see what kind of person she is. Ve'ish, a man, lo, yatzil, from Natsal, save her, mi yadi, from my hand, okay? So we would actually read that as no man can save her, not a man cannot save her, but we would put it in English, no man will save her from my hand. Is she ever going to repent? Maybe by chapter 14. Hishbati, what is the root? He's going to Shabbat what? He's going to cause to cease what? Call Misosa. We talked about Sos, right? 
Rejoicing, happy rejoicing. Chaga. What is a chag? A festival. All you see every single one of these. Hey with the dagish. Hey with the dagish. What does it mean? Hey with the dagish. The end. Her. All her rejoicing. All her holiday. Chodesha. All her new moons. That's right. So even though it says just just the chodesh is there, we know that that said it. And also Shabbat and also Kol Moada, all her appointed times. That's it. So if we're looking at this as a picture of uh, the the Northern Kingdom that got lost, what happened to all do this? Do those people do anything? They don't have the holidays anymore. They don't have the Sabbath. They don't have the appointed times. They don't have any of it. Hashimoto sounds like you know a Japanese disease, but it's not. So what do you what do you find to be the root in there. Can you see anything? Sham. So what does Sham mean? Over there. And so what is the Shamayim? Well, there's the water that's up there. My right? Shamayim, the water is up there. It is translated as the heavens. But it's sort of like the over thereness up there. The extended idea of Sham has to do with over thereness. And it gets a lot of extended meanings as a result of that. So of course, we are going to dig into them. Mlachim Aleph. First Malachi, that would be a new idea. We, are, we have one Malachi. I guess if another Malachi comes, he'll be the second Malachi. Atet Pasuk Shmona. Perik Tet Pasuk Shmona. The Havai Tezeh. And this house, what house are they talking about? The house on the hill, the temple. And this house, Ye'el Yon. Most high. Okay. It is a most high, except for that. Call over. All the Hebrews? What does over mean literally? All the passers by. Okay. All those who are crossing over, Allah, across it, Yishon. So here it's translated as to be astonished. Well, we'll do all the examples and then I'll explain it better. I don't know how I just went by that. I just I think I didn't put it in there. It has to do from it took their breath away. It comes from nasham, which means to breathe. So what is nishama? Sometimes it's translated as a soul. Every every living, breathing thing. Call nishama. We sing it in 150, right? Call nishama to halal yeah. All that has breath. Praise the Lord. The idea of astonished means that it takes your breath away. You're like, <gasps> so they're all astonished and... Uh, and what else are they? And they're sharak. Sharak is uh, maybe a little bit of a onomatopoeic word, like shh, shh, hissing, hissing and whistling. Okay? Why? Biamru, and they will say, al me asayo e kaka. Why? For what reason? Al me, on why? For what reason did God do thus, this kind of thing? What did he do? He's laying it waste, that's right. It's going to be destroyed. La'aretz hazot, la'bayat hazeh, for this land and this house. Why did God do all these horrible things? And the answer is because they forsook the only their God. Okay, it's always the same answer. It's always the same question, always the same answer. Okay, so this is one idea of shaman, uh, shamem, is to be astonished. It takes your breath away. Now we have a very hard thing to find, Echa. What is Echa? Lamentations. Do you know where to find it? Why is it called Echa? What does that have to do with lamenting? Uh, you find it after Ruth. So Echa is the first word, so it has nothing to do with lamentations. And it's not next to Jeremiah like it is in your King James orders. Echa means Ech, like how. How. How, right? How lonely is this? Zion, Avelot. We've talked about. Uh, uh, this is not Hevel, Abel vanity. This is Hevel. Mourning ways are their ways of mourning. You know, everybody is sad. Bli means without. What is this form ba'e? It's a smichud of ba'im. So what does it mean? The comers, the comers of the moed. There are nobody's coming for the Moedim anymore, right? Because it's uh, destroyed, as in Jeremiah's time. Kol Sha'areha, what is Sha'ar? Gates, all her gates, Shomem. They're all destroyed. 
So this is part of the astonishment is destruction. I didn't even write this on here, this destruction. Okay, the destruction is so intense that it takes your breath away. Okay, we'll tie some, some of it together in a Koheneha, Kohen, Kohenim, her priests, Ne'enachim are sighing. Sigh. Bitula. Bitula. What's a bitula? Bitula is a virgin. And so this is part of the big argument about Isaiah, where it says a virgin will conceive. It doesn't say this virgin, it says Alma. That's why. Which just means a young woman. Her virgin, good. They're afflicted. The he, who is the he here? But who is it? Jerusalem, Marla. She is bitter. It is bitter to her. We are looking at Shomem. Shomem, astonished. Destruction. Let's see what else we find. Vayikra, Kafvav, Pasuk Shloshim Veshtayim. So this is the same Hashimoti as it is in um, Hosea. And this is that God is doing this. So it's a he feel. I am causing destruction on the land. And then the second one is a pa'al shamamu. And so somebody else is doing destruction. And who is that? The enemies. Oy vechem. Their enemies will destroy her. Which enemies? Hayoshavim ba. That dwell in her, in the land. Okay, so God is. Hashimoti, I would do it, but the enemies are Shamanu. They are doing it, or they did it. One more Yeshayahu, Samech Gimel, Pasuk Chamesh, Abit. I think we've never had this, Abit. Have we have it? Yes, we have it. That's a look. Uh huh. Who's look? I. Okay, I looked. The Ein Ozer. There is no helper. No one can help me. The Esh Tomem. Yofi, what binyan is it? Hit fa'el. So you have the famous metathesis. It should look something like this, but because this is a shin, it moves to here. So you have hishtomem, eshtomem. But in the hit fa'el, it, it means it's a, a kind of a per, internal astonishment, like I was wondering. Internal astonishment. <laughs> what am I wondering about? Because I have no helper. Uh, not only do I have not helper, I have no somech. What is Sameach? Huh? That's Sameach with a sin That's and a chet. It's just all the wrong letters, but I'll, I'll give you a half a point. You don't. You do know this, okay? It's a little bit obscure. It's the letter Sameach. It's the name of the letter Sameach, and it means to lean on. So when they put the hands on the animal, the priest, smicha is the word for ordination, because they lay hands on it, on them for ordination. And you also know smichut. And so how is it? The one word leans on the other word. The this of that. So he has no help. Ozer, he has no helper. He has no somer. He has nothing to lean on. Tosha li zeroi. What is the tosha? Hosea. We're saying the book of Hosea. What's the root? Say. She will say li zeroa. Where's your zeroa? Your arm. My own arm saved me. Okay, I have no helper. Vechamati, chamat is that burning of anger. She, and here's your smichut again. Samachtani. She upheld me. Wow, have you ever been in a time where your anger was the only thing that held you together? <laughs> right? Yeah, unfortunately, I see that face. But, but if for God, this is God, this is God speaking. This is a righteous anger. He says, I have to pursue what I'm doing here with these people until righteousness can be achieved, right? If the people need to be destroyed or punished or whatever in his anger, that's what's sustaining him until the finish of whatever it is, the end of it. This is uh, a bit long, but we know the whole rest of it. Let's finish this, and then um, we'll just talk one minute about all this root of Shamam, okay? So, Hashimoti, I have brought destruction. I'm bringing destruction. Gafna, you should know. How do you know it? Gafna, you know it. 
What is it? It's the yeah. vine, Bore oh. Pri Hagafen. <laughs> right? I'm going to destroy her vines. And Te'ena, you remember Te'ena? Fig, Asher, Amra, Etna, Hema, Li. <clears throat> etna, I think, is translated as wages. Asher, not new Lima, Habai, which my lovers have given me. Okay, this is, uh, the Etna is like a, a giving. Right? This is the giving that they have given me, my lovers. The Sam team, which is Sam, Samti, Sam. I put, what's the M at the end, Mum? I put them, Ria, or I think maybe you don't. She's, he's, God is telling her, I'm taking the vines, I'm taking the fig trees, which you think were the, your wages from your lovers, and I'm going to put them, I'm going to make them like a forest. Okay, Ba'achal Tam, Achal, eat them. Who's going to eat them? Chayat Hasadeh the living thing, the animals of the field. That's right. Okay, now let's just look at this whole concept of sham nishama to bring those that shum is garlic, which is a good root. Breathing is a good root for garlic. But the idea, the whole idea behind it is the essence of what something is. That's why it means name. Shem. The shem is a name. It's the essence of who you are. That's why all these names are so important. That's why we study Hebrew, so we can learn all the names and understand about the people. But when you, when you, um, when you eat garlic, it kind of like pervades you. It becomes, right? And garlic is so strong that you can take a clove of garlic, you can take a clove of garlic and put it between your toes and you'll taste it in about 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm just telling you, this is the nature of garlic. Okay, so it's the essence of who you are and how you breathe, right? And so we have all this astonishment and destruction and wonderment. The whole idea behind that is, <gasps> right, it's a, that breathing and the essence of the thing that's completely destroyed. It has its own essence of something that's completely destroyed. I don't know if you got to see anything in Israel that was like smashed to the ground or like 911, you know, all the pictures, right? It was just a pile of ashes you know it takes your breath away not even things that are just bombs and stuff right so this is the idea behind shem nasham shomem to be astonished to, if, when you see something like that it's astonishing okay and you wonder what happened here okay. the essence of it is gone and the garlic okay my friends thank you and come back next week Yay. we'll still be here